and it melts. It's okay. Yeah. It'll be 58 by Monday here. What's happening, peeps? Hey, Ubaldo. Hey, Ubaldo. How you doing? Hello. I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing fantastic. Uh, you know, command today, right? It's giving me some work. All right. So today we're going to talk about campaigns. You know, this is the thing right now. We're going to generate some leads today. Um, I actually have to do um, a campaign today for one of my new listings. So we'll walk through the whole process of creating a campaign today. Great. And then the dash, the new dashboard and how everything works. Um, and then what we'll do is that if you guys have, as I'm going along, if you have questions on that step or that process, make sure you stop me and ask me because I know there's a lot of stuff that, you know, that we're doing and people are talking about. So now depending on where you're at in what region you're at, so whether you're in Chicago, Indiana, or Cali, so how you prepare your, your campaigns are going to be a little bit different, okay? Because in some areas or the type of property you're doing, you might want to do shrink your radius versus expanding it. So if I list a property here in Oak Lawn, if I do a 30 mile radius, it's pretty cool because I'm trying to grab people from around Oak Lawn to move into Oak Lawn. But if I'm going further south, like uh, Lansing, which is very close to Indiana, I have to watch the radius because I don't want to, I'm not licensed in Indiana. So depending on what leads I'm getting, it will depend on the person, right? So we have to be careful on, on the radius when you're looking at it. Now with Facebook is very restrictive right now, as far as the radius goes, because it doesn't let you go any less than 15 miles. Now that has to do with equal housing discrimination and the yada, yada, all that good stuff, right? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started. And like I said, as I'm going through it, make sure you stop me if you have questions in the process. And then we are recording the session. And I promise, you know, I'm gonna get better at posting these as they are, they're done. It's just been a couple of hectic weeks here, but we're getting better, everything's going up. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's do command. All right, you guys can see the dashboard, the command dashboard, yeah? No, okay. No. No, there yeah. we go. Yeah, yep. Yep. Good, good. All right, all right, so here we go. Now, depending on your internet connection, you might, we might lag, so, you know, just let me, you guys will catch up with me. Hey. Right. Hey. <laughs> all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is that, you know, if you click the red square, and I always talk about the red square because the KW, because a lot of people don't know which icons are which, right? So if you just click the, the red square, it's going to expand. It's going to tell you what each one is. We're going to be working on the campaigns one today. And the campaign, if you click on campaigns, there's a new spot in campaigns now. that is super cool. Oh, and I'm in the wrong account, so hold on. This is what happens when you're multitasking, right? Let me log out of this account. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was trying out some new stuff today. Let's do this. Let me log out of here. All right. Do, do, do. All right, we're going to go to campaigns now. Now that I'm in the right account. And Comcast by me is running super slow today. So, you know, if you guys see that my computer's lagging a little bit, just let's be, be patient with me. Um, okay, so you guys see right here, so this is our new dashboard. And what I like about the new dashboard is gonna, it, it tells me a couple of things. New dashboard tells me my total, I could see the performance over the last 30 days. Come on, drop down, year to date or the past 12 months. Now, most of us have not been doing enough ads so to show the past 12 months, right? Or even year to date. So it just depends on like what you've been doing year to date. And it would tell you, like, okay, I spent $76 on this account that I'm in right now. Ubaldo, I think we need to mute everyone. There's a lot of background noise from uh, everybody moving around. Ubaldo, make me a host, and I'll manage that for you. You got it. Where are you, Corey? There. There you are. Let me try. All right, Corey, you're in. 
Thanks, Corey. Okay. So our total spend for the year, year to date, has been seventy-six dollars out of this account that I'm in right now. Um, I've generated sixty-nine leads, and I've done three Facebook campaigns out of this particular account. Now my engagement has been four likes. Now engagement, just so you guys understand, engagement is if people actually like like your ad on Facebook, not necessarily click on the ad to go and actually get more information. It's like if they like it, if they love it, if they hate it, if they laugh at it, whatever, right? That's engagement. Now, the nice thing about this is that I, in this square right here, because I have my goals for leads set up in command, it's telling me that my goal of 112, in order to hit my goal for leads, I need to, hit, I need to get 100 more, 112 more leads which means I'm 45% to target. So it's pretty cool, right? So like if you're trying to generate a certain amount of leads to grow your database, this will actually keep track of the growth of your database. It will also tell you how aggressively you're, you're running campaigns to generate those leads. And if you need to bump it up or if you should bump up your goal, I would never say um, laid back on generating leads. I would say adjust your goals to meet what you're actually doing. Um, so as we're going through this. Now, the nice thing about this is that it also allows me to manage all the, the accounts that, I'm, that I have connected to here, right? So if I go to manage, it's gonna show me all the accounts that I have. So I have an ads manager account with Facebook. And if I go here to connect Facebook page, I think this is the one. It's gonna bring up all my Facebook pages. Ah, uh, I didn't do it. Oh, that's, I'm in the wrong spot, that's why. I'm in the wrong spot. This one right here. This is what happens when you're learning and teaching at the same time. Um, I did something here where I was able to show and see all of my accounts the other day. All right, I'm, I'm gonna remember as I go through here and I'll show you guys. It was, oh, it's because I already added them all. Duh. So I have like 13 or 14 pages, they're all on here. So I'll show you any page that I have access to to post on, it's gonna be on here. So these are all the pages that I said I wanna to post to. And then for my paid ads, these are the two, the three accounts that I have. So I have a Facebook ad account, I have an AdWords account, and then of course I could send emails out of my account too. All right, so, okay, so let's start a campaign, right? So we're gonna go under paid ads today. So we're gonna work on a paid ad today. And we're gonna generate some leads. So let's see here, which one's this one? Payless Park. All right, so let's, let's generate, a, let's do one. We're gonna, we're gonna go on a social ad. And I'm gonna name my campaign, 1705 Richmond. Great. I'm gonna advertise a listing. Now, as far as I know, this doesn't really tell Facebook what you're doing. This is more about you training the system of what kind of things you're doing. So basically, I'm training the system that I'm, I like to generate uh, leads for listings. So it's generating. It helps the algorithm of the of the ad. You know, so when we're when we're at, when KWRI is adjusting the algorithm of how the performance of your ad, it takes account into what you're trying to do. So in this case, I'm trying to advertise for listings. And then today I'm gonna to do a Facebook and an ads account. It's Facebook and, um, and Instagram are the same account. You could, you could run ads on both out of the same account. So, because they're owned by Facebook. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up my campaign now. And here we're gonna go. All right, oh, that's right here. Let's bring it in. Ibaldo, I have a question for you. Yep, go for it. Um, when you're setting up your accounts for the Facebook, are you setting up your business account with them or your personal page with them? Okay, so your you when you first link your account, it's going to be your general personal account because that's okay. the way you access your business page. But you cannot okay. run ads on a personal account; it has to be right. a business page. So when you're going to when you're setting up your account and it's access, it is connected through your personal page. How are you linking it over to run on your business page? I will tell you in just a second. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. 
Okay, so now here is where the, the trick part is, right? Um, actually, go back. Um, it depends how good you are at ad copy, right? So what is, what is gonna attract people to want to, um, to look at this? Now, one of the tricks that I've learned since running ads is don't write too much stuff in here because you want the stuff to show. Uh, you don't want it to say like, um, like learn, like uh, read more or expand. You just want to be able to put enough text that people see it and then they're, they're wanting to want to click. But don't, don't write a two page paragraph. Okay? Besides, I think um, command actually limited it to like 250. Um, so like, and it tells you down here, right? We recommend 125 characters or less because we want to appear, we want, we want to show all the text. You know, you gotta think about like if you were the buyer. So what is the, what am I gonna talk about here? So let's say in 100 West Town, lot offer six, over 6,000 square feet of space, repurpose or keep it as is, R3 zoning. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Four, three plus hundred. I'm gonna actually just leave it like that. That's all I'm gonna put on there. You know, I think that's perfectly fine. It's a commercial property, so um, you know, this is this is gonna be sufficient for what I'm trying to do here. My headline is gonna be. Mm -mm -mm, we're gonna put it on here. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Let me add some emojis in here. Let's see. Actually, I want to put just listed. All right, so this is my ad copy, guys, okay? So just mm -hmm. listen, the heart of Chicago's West Town lot offers over 6,000 square feet of space, great location to develop, repurpose, or keep as is, R3 zoning. So people are gonna know right away, this is a commercial property, it's an investment opportunity. So I, you know, my, my call to action is amazing West Town investment opportunity. For complete details on this amazing investment opportunity, click on learn more. So I'm telling them what I want them to do, right? So this is gonna be that, I'm gonna save it. And then I'm gonna configure my media. So here's where I'm gonna select what pictures I want. So let's see what we got here. What we got here. Uh, I think one. Well, do that one. And I always use the wide, the wide angle, but because I'm doing Instagram as well, I am gonna do a square one because Instagram works best with square pictures. So if you're gonna do both, you have to know, you have to know what you're gonna be doing here because if you're gonna do both, 
then you have to make sure you get the right picture and it's at the right size. For if you're doing just Facebook, the white ones work best and they look better. Uh, but for mobile phones and Instagram, the square pictures are better. So if you're doing a dual ad, um, you want you would want to do square picture. Now there's uh, there's a couple of ideas you could do. So in the past, what I've done is I run Instagram ads on their own, and then I run a Facebook ad on its own, um, just to show the pictures differently, right? But I want to in this case, I'm doing it to optimize the amount of money I'm going to spend. So let's say my spend is going to be thirty dollars. I don't want to spend more money. Um, I don't want to spend $60. I don't want to spend 30 here and 30 there. I just want to spend 30 total. And I want it to be spread over the two platforms. Now, the nice thing about that is that faith, that PWRI, the algorithms are going to see where your ad is performing better and push it more towards those platforms of, uh, than the other. So if your, your ad is performing better on Facebook, it's going to push it more towards Facebook. If it starts performing really well on Instagram, then it's going to start, it's going to show it on Instagram more. You follow me? Right. Perfect. Let's see. And then I don't like this front picture, the first one, so I'm going to switch it. Now you could add up to five different images, just so you guys know. Change that picture. All right, so let's see. I like, I like this one. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, if I click over here, I can see what they look like, right? So here's a, here's my my Instagram post. You see how cool that looks? So that's my story. It's gonna put on my stories, and then um, I got the mobile on the Facebook. So you see that those square pictures look better for mobile. You kind of just have to figure like where you're gonna get the most clicks. Now, in my opinion, you're gonna get your most clicks on the mobile side. Very few people are in front of a computer actually browsing Facebook. Most of them are lounging on their couch listening to a Zoom call while browsing Facebook, right? Because they don't want to listen like right now. You know, most people are probably, you know, on their Facebook while I talk and then, you know, that's the way it goes. I understand. I understand. No hard feelings. No uh, way. I'm listening to every word. <laughs> every single word. Every single word. Hanging on by a string. There you go. Now this this property, this commercial property, also features a full house on here, a five bedroom home included in the in the purchase of the of the structure of the church. So I'm gonna include my 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 property here because I want them to see that house. It's a five bedroom home. It's part of the, the details. We're gonna add that pick on there. And you could add up to five images. You don't have to, but you know it helps again with algorithms. Like how is it gonna show better? Is it gonna how many which pictures are people gonna click on more? Are they gonna click on the are they gonna click on the house? Are they gonna click on the commercial building? Are they gonna click when they see the inside of the property? So I always try to do the five. If there's like if there's not five pictures that I like, then I just don't do it, right? But if there's five pictures, I show them all. Let me see how this one looks. And actually I like this one right here. See how we look here. All right. All right. Let me add one more. Let me see if I can find one more that I like. So, let's do that. Oh, my other picture didn't save. What? All right. So, pick one more then since it didn't pick my other one. Oh, 
All right, cool. We've got to mute some backgrounds again. Sorry, I was crunching in your ear. <laughs> all right, so we got our pictures. We're all good there. We got our logo. The DBA logo is automatically added for you. Um, if you want to add the DBA logo with your logo on it or your own logo, depending on, you got to make sure you're within regulations. So each state is different. So uh, I'm going to tell you that here in Illinois, um, if you're going to do the, your team logo, it has to be along with your brokerage logo and it has to be about the same size. So Indiana has their own rules. California has their own rules. Talk to your MCAs and managing broker for details to so make sure you're doing what it's supposed to be doing. If you're new at um, same, same here in California. Awesome. Thank you, Anita. All right. Media. Okay. So here we're going to go now. So here's the part of um, Eva. So once you get to the part where it says Facebook and Instagram ads, it's going to ask you, okay, which page are you running? So it's my account is this one. And these are the pages available that I have. And I'm going to use my, my group. You see it changes over here. So now it says the Diaz group at Keller Williams. And then where do I want my ad to run? Do I want it to run on Instagram ad or Instagram story, right? Where do I want it? On a regular page that like when, you're, when you're scrolling or should I do a story? I tend to do the, um, the one that, the regular ad, because it pops up on anywhere. Your story, it just depends on, you know, who sees your story and stuff like that. So it's up to you on how you want to do it, right? So we're going to do learn more. Um, let me look up my Let's see if I can find my property on here. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, snap. Come on. There we go. All right, guys, my internet's really slow today for whatever reason, but we're gonna we're gonna go through here. We're gonna go through here, so. This is my link right here. I'm gonna copy my link. Uh, when you're looking at what to link, always link it to one of your websites. Don't use Zillow. Don't use um, Trulia. Don't use Redfin. You want the least to stay with you. So like when they come to the site, they're gonna see me. They're gonna contact me. They're gonna call me. They're gonna send me an email. They're gonna schedule a tour with me and uh, stuff like that. So whatever website you're using, make sure that it's yours. You know, if there's no specific website that you, I might tell you to use, as long as it's yours and you're gonna get a direct lead, okay? So I got my property bank here. Boom. I'm gonna send it here. And Baldo, it doesn't that matter. Your, What's that? Was that your your agent site through KW? Yeah, that's the market leader website though. That's not um that's the E Edge website. That's not the command website. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that is my that is my um uh, one, that's one of my KW websites. All right. So and then the one of the things here you see. I don't care which website you use, so whether it's your KW website or not, as long as it's yours, because we're gonna use a Facebook lead generation form. And what this does is that it's gonna allow you to capture the information 
before they even get to your website. So if they get to your website and they just look at it and they leave, that's perfectly fine, right? Because we got all their information already. Now, if you're gonna use a landing page, so there's landing pages you can do too, right? So you create a landing page and you send them there. The problem is that now when they get to the landing page, there has to be an action. They have to, they have to do something. And then depending on how well designed your landing pages will determine on whether or not they actually ask for more information and give you their info. So I like to get a hold of them, even if they don't want to proceed in my in my website, because I want to capture their info so I could keep dripping them and texting them and you know stalk them throughout the process. So the learn more is what I want that to say, and this is my website link, and I'm using the Facebook lead generation, and I'm going to do custom settings on the targeting. In the custom targeting, I'm going to target a custom audience, not my database. Now database, depending on what you're doing, this could be useful. So if you're sending out stuff for like COVID-19 and stuff like that, like you're reaching out to your database, you wanna, you wanna send them information or send them to a landing page you created regarding COVID-19. You can target your database so that when it's running through Facebook, it's targeting them based on their email address. Now, just word of caution with that. The database targeting only works if it works really well, if the email that you have for them is one of the emails that I have on file with Facebook, right? Because that's what it's doing. It's going through Facebook, it's crawling, and it's looking to see if those emails are there. And then what it does, it targets those people and the people around them. So it could be really good, and it, you know, it just depends on what you, what you want to do with it. So this is in Chicago. Chow, um, Illinois. I wonder if it'll let me put. I don't think it did last time. Mm -hmm. I didn't think so. Now the only problem with like when when you're doing a city like Chicago is that Chicago is huge. So I have to be I have to make sure that I'm doing it the right way. Um, you know what? I mean, up as a city, that's fine. All right. Let me just double check that. I'm pretty sure that there's no West Town, Illinois. Yeah, I thought pretty cool. All right, so it comes up as a city, which is fine. I don't care as long as I'm targeting the right people. And then I'm gonna go within, actually I'll keep it, I'm gonna go down to like 15 miles because I'm targeting people for a specific commercial property. So if I spread the net too far in that area, I'm gonna be targeting probably the wrong audience. So I'm gonna go with to 15 miles. That is the minimum net you could cast. You cannot go smaller than 15. Um, in certain areas, if you're in the burbs, uh, like here in Illinois, if you're in the suburbs, like Orland Park or Oak Lawn, then the net should be bigger because you're trying to attract people that want to move to those areas, right? So like here in, in Oak Lawn, we want to attract people in Chicago, the surrounding small suburbs like Burbank and Chicago Ridge because they're, they're small. This, this will be a move up town for them. So we want to attract them to come to us. So then my net will be wider in these areas to generate more leads. Uh, so just uh, know that. Okay, so then I'm gonna go here. My interest is gonna be realtor.com. And in this case, I'm gonna do pro also. And the only reason I'm doing pro is because this is a commercial property. So who are, the, who are also investors, right? Wouldn't you as a realtor want to buy an investment property? You should. You don't, you need to check yourself. Julia, and I'm gonna do Premiere also, just in case. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, real estate investing, development, because this is commercial. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do a trust here, that's fine. Creative real estate investing, that's a real one. That's a really good one there. <laughs> commercial property 
So these will be like, these will be my top ones for this type of property. Because uh, it's a commercial property, it's an investment property. So I want to talk to people, all type of people that want to invest in property, even if it's realtors. Because in this case, hey, you want to spend $1.7 million on a commercial property? Come to me. I'll take you. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save Facebook and Instagram ads. That portion is done. The next part is the budget. Now, by default, they always say 10 days. I will tell you, depending on where you're at, to try it out, right? My best ads run better on a four-day thing. So usually, like, today, Thursday is a perfect day to run ads because they'll start Friday, and then I'll run it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday because that's when people are usually home in front of their phones and doing nothing right now. In this time of era right now, people are on their computers a lot more often. So running an ad during the week is actually not gonna be bad right now. But I'm prepping you for not for running ads continuously moving forward. So you gotta look at your town and your area and find out when is the, mo the most prominent time for people to be on the internet? When do people click on their ads? When are, when are my friends on Facebook? My friends are on Facebook all the time. So it just depends, right? So check your, Check your area, know your people, know your places, right? So for this particular one, I'm gonna run it to, I'm gonna run it. So today's, today's, tomorrow will be the 17th. I'm gonna run it through Monday. So that will give me four days. Now the budget's $30, so it will run for, it'll be about $3.75 per day. What I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna go here and I want it to be $4 per day. So we'll do that. It's gonna to go to two channels. Now this right here, you know, use automatic placement for Facebook ads. Facebook uses the algorithm, you know, so basically you could allow Facebook to decide where it will perform better. You could use that option if you want. I prefer to use the KWRI algorithms versus Facebook's because we run so many ads as a company that our algorithms will tend to be way better than what Facebook is doing on their, on their own. Because Facebook is not looking at everybody's ads. Facebook is just kind of doing like, well, based on this type of ad, this might be the best algorithm for you. Where in KWRI, the, the ad placement, the algorithm, it's much better because we're continuously running ads on this type of platform all the time. So I would allow, KWRI to do it instead of, you know, Facebook. That's just me. I'll let you guys decide what you guys want to do. All right. So I got my, I, I need my ad. I got my, my listing. We did the text and everything here. Our pictures, we got our Facebook, Instagram ads and our duration. All I got to do now is publish it, right? So you click on publish. And tell me, where do you want me to take your money from? I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and take it from there. I'll take a minute to process everything. And don't, don't lose your patience. It does take a second for it to go through. Don't get super scared if you get a little red line that says, oh my God, it didn't go through. Just breathe, do it again, and it will be fine. Trust me, it'll be okay. Okay, so this is a Facebook ad campaign. This is a social media campaign. Give me some questions. What do you guys got before we move to the next one? Hey, Obano, you those algorithms, either Facebook or KW, could you run both of them or you have to only choose one? I don't understand your question. You're talking about like if I let uh, Facebook algorithms Correct. versus KW algorithms? Correct. You got to choose one or the other because you okay. can't, that your ad is not going to, it's not going to be able to decipher which algorithm you want to use. It's okay. going to use one or the other. Okay. So you cannot use both. Okay, great. Yeah, no. It's like a it's like a car, right? You either gonna take the left turn or the right turn. Any other questions? Are you gonna show us how to um, run campaigns? Like for me, I'm new. I don't have um, like listings yet um, to run ads and like on um, Instagram and Facebook too. What market center are you with? 
What was that? What market center are you with? Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa. Uh -huh. um, you know, I bet you that if you reach out to Mark or Anita, they could find you a listing from another agent that wouldn't mind free advertising. I was going to um, say, just, just reach out to some agents in your office mm -hmm. and ask them, hey, um, can I make a Facebook ad on your listing? Uh, of course, I would definitely ask, but I don't think anybody's going to have a problem with an ad uh, listing being advertised. Um, yeah, I mean, if you called me, you could advertise my listings. I know you're in California, but you could advertise all my listings. Um, so yeah, I would, I would reach out to your marketer, like Mark or Anita, or one of the agents that you get along with over there, and borrow a listing and advertise those. The other thing you could do is also, you know, you could advertise campaigns for, um, you know, for buyers. Like, um, do you want to get yourself um, uh, pre-approved today? You know, maybe we run a campaign on so, uh, special pro uh, programs that your lenders are, are having in the area. You know, get a, you know, who's your, who's your preferred lender or what kind of, maybe you want to do a buyer seminar virtually, you know, you get a hold of an attorney and, or not an attorney at this California, you guys don't use attorneys, but maybe a title rep or a lender and maybe talk, you know, host a virtual, a virtual buyer seminar. I mean, that's something that you could do. I mean, we do those here. Um, that has worked in the past. So there's a lot of options you could do. Um, don't let the fact that you don't have your own listings yet scare you away from starting ads because people would like, people would want information. So there's something that you could do. Um, you could promote your app. You know, what better way than to promote your app? One of my new agents um, grabbed a new video and promoting her app and she had, there was three comments on her that, hey, I just downloaded it, I'll be calling you soon. So there's different things you could do, you know, promote your app, promote your website, um, host virtual um, buyer seminars and reach out to the agents in your market center and see who you could borrow a listing from. Uh, I guarantee you that nine out of 10 agents you reach are not gonna tell you not to free advertising. They want that listing sold and they don't care if you generate buyers off of it. Okay, and I, are you gonna show us how to um, like kind of do advertising for our, our app? Oh, I could definitely do that for sure, yeah. yeah so if you go to the dashboard here actually, mm -hmm. if you go to the dashboard, there are some pre-made posts for you guys, okay? So this is pretty cool here. So these are right here, and if you, you see up here, there's a shuffle button, it actually shuffles through. So these are pre-made images for you through your designs templates so, and designs over here um, that are pre-made for you. Even the, even the ad copy is pre-done for you. So you could choose. I mean, there's a market video you could do too. And if you click the little arrow right here, it will actually take you to doing stuff like that. Or excuse me, I got the hiccups all on. All right, so like the market Snapchat, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna promote that, like lo love looking at homes, why not my app? So you're gonna promote your app here. And if I click this arrow right here, and like I said, you click the shuffle one, it actually shows you multiple pictures you can choose from. Oh, so I could do this right here and look, my ad copy is already done for me. Love looking at homes with my app. You can you can search zip codes, code district, blah, blah. I mean, you don't have to even do anything. And if you have your marketing profile done, and if you don't, just uh, send me a text or an email and we'll set up a time to, um, I'll send you my calendar link so you can set up a time and go over it. But you set up your profile and your mobile app is automatically linked in here. I mean, you don't even have to do that. The picture is done for you. Your DBA logo is done. I mean, it's pretty sweet. I mean, you don't have to do a lot of work here. And then you get to choose what page. Now, most people don't have, are not, you know, crazy like me and have like a million pages. But you get to choose which page or how, how many. Like I could actually, because this is a social post, I could actually click on all my pages. And I need to move this out of my way here. And to promote your app, you have to pay for that one too. No, this one is a, um, this one's just a post. Oh. I just selected I just selected all these pages, uh -huh. and I'm gonna do it on my Twitter page too, just to, for kicks. This is a schedule post, and I could publish it immediately. I'm gonna say publish it immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead and post it on all these pages right now. And this is what it's gonna look like. So if I click on preview, it's gonna look like this. So no matter which town I'm at, so I could be like, well, how is it gonna look in Old Forest? I was going to look in Orland. So one of the things that I do is that I, I have a business page, obviously, which is the this group. But one of the things that I've learned while advertising, my business has, was always heavily um, us, um, internet leads in the past. I used to run um, landing pages for a lot of neighborhoods. Is that I found out that people love in neighborhood pages. The people that live in Oak Forest want to talk about Oak Forest, right? So now you got to make sure there's not just about real estate. You got to post some other stuff in there. 
um, people want Lagrange, you want to learn about Lagrange, you know, so you're going to make up a specific, but this is what it's going to look like. And then all I got to do is hit publish post and it's done for me. Like, yeah, there it is. Boom. Done. It's going to go and post it on my pages. That is an easy way to do a, a quick post and those are free. Okay. Yeah, and another thing you can do, I think Ashley, you were on the designs class the other day, but if you're in there, just look at the KW app sections of design. There's a bunch of designs in there. You just, you really don't even have to do anything with them besides put your, um, your ad, your information on there, and then you can create an ad that way. There's some that say find the top rated school districts. Um, there's there's plenty of different ways that you can just start posting some things. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just, um, I, I only have a personal Facebook and I just got it like right when I started here, like two weeks ago. So don't really have anyone following me on there yet. So. Okay. There and start adding every family member, you know, <laughs> absolutely. And, friend. and everybody that you didn't, that you didn't like in high school, you add them too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Oh, really? if, it doesn't matter if they like. It doesn't matter if they like you or not. If you just want to sell them a house. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. <laughs> There's people on my Facebook that I don't. I don't talk to. I have. I have, I have them muted. But I. I do send them my my listings every time I can. <laughs> so those are posts that you could do for free. Uh, add people that you have in there. Create a business page. So even if you're just getting started, create a business page. Start building a brand. And it's so easy to build a brand. Uh, you know, Corey went over the designs class. And if you were in his designs class, you know, there's so much in there you could do right away, like your background pictures, your own profile picture, everything's in there. Start branding yourself, create a business page. You might not have a lot of followers yet, but you're not going to have followers until you start running ads. Yeah. Because those people that like your ads, you know, they're going to start, you know, liking your page. They're going to start following you. Uh, and that's what I mean. Like my page, I have 780 people that like my page. But there's 895 that follow it. So you see the ratio there? There's about 100 people that don't like my page, like like it, like it, but they follow my stuff. And I don't care if they like my page as long as they see my stuff. And if they follow it, they still get to see my, my post. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's all that matters to me. Because the people that follow me are the people that are actually going to see my stuff and they're actually going to potentially buy something from it. So create your business page if you haven't done one yet. Invite all the people that you know to that business page and start getting and promoting it and then run an ad. I mean, I know that, um, you know, when we say try to run ads and it costs money, you don't have to spend a million dollars. I mean, if all you have is a $10 budget, run it for two days, five bucks a day. Mm -hmm. You know, just do what you can. But, you know, you want to generate some leads. You want to generate people you're talking to. And if you don't have leads, you know, you don't have a pipeline, you're going to have a hard, a hard time, you know. And right now it's so easy to generate leads on Facebook. I mean, I read the, I think, what was the one ad that I ran here? I think I ran it for like two days. Um, what is that? Two days I ran it for, it was $15. Now this, these were expensive leads because I ran it for a short period of time. I didn't, I didn't do my radius right. So it, it cost me like $2, but still, I mean, $2 a lead is nothing. I mean, when I was buying leads from Zillow three years ago, they were costing me like 15, 20, $30 a lead because they charge you so much that by the time you converted one, you know, the ones that were actually good leads, I was paying a lot more money than that, you know. <laughs> but then you go down here, I have 50, almost 50 cents of a lead and, and the team account that I have with my business partner, you know, we were, we ran an ad, but one day we were lucky. I mean, that, and the house was popular and we were, we got leads at 12 cents a lead. I mean, it just depends, right? You gotta tweak your ad copy. But I mean, you're, there's nowhere you're gonna go and run an ad campaign that is gonna cost you a dollar or less for a lead. So money will spend. I mean, if you spend 10 bucks and you get 10 leads, right? A dollar a lead, who cares? If you get spend 10 bucks and you get five leads and you convert three of those to buyers, who cares, right? Mm -hmm. So it just depends on your scene. Email campaigns. Now, I want to make sure that you guys understand how this works. If you do an email campaign, you need a MailChimp account. Now, MailChimp for free allows you to have one audience, which means one list. And you can't have more than 2,000 contacts. Now, if you're brand new, brand new, you probably have like 200, maybe 100. Most people know about 300, right? But let's say you have three, let's say you have 100 people in your database, that's no big deal if you use MailChimp all day long. However, if you have a bigger database, 
and you want to have multiple venues of sending emails, then this is not going to be the best option unless you're going to spend some money on MailChimp. Now, MailChimp, depending on how many lists you have, grows and charges. They changed their whole platform uh, last year. Um, and it actually, it, it could become, uh, in my opinion, it's not cost effective because emails are like snail mail. You know, if people don't like you, they put it into the spam folder and then they'll never see your email, right? So if you have MailChimp, you'll create a, a nice email through here, a nice list. But I'm gonna, I showed you guys, if you were in my smart plans class last week, I showed you guys how to create a smart plan for a bulk email. And for, for me, this works better than the campaigns one. Because what I could do in my smart plans is I could create an email and there's a trick to it, all right? Because there's no, um, you can't schedule smart plans yet. You know, it's, it's gonna come soon. So what I found out tweaking it around and playing around today is that I could create a mass email like this one. All right, so I created this mass email. And then I could go ahead and set up people that I want to send it out to. And it will send out today at some point. And if I'm creating an email campaign, that's, it doesn't matter when it goes out. You know, if I, if I want it to go out three days from now, then it's three days from now, who cares? The only difference is that right now, it's a text email, and who cares? Put your links in there, blah, 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 it'll go to the place, it works. You know, so if you, if, if you guys wanna know how to create the mass email, I'll, I'll send you guys the link to the Smart Plans class. But this is the way I would do email campaigns, is through here. It's the most effective way to do it, I should, I should say the most effective, the most cost effective way to do it right now. You know, and it's about getting your point across, about sending people information. And that's what you would do. That's what I would do. So like the market centers, we're, we're sending information constantly to people about COVID-19. That's the way we do it. All right, so let's see what we got here. It's taking forever. Direct mail, this one I actually like a lot. I could get it in here. There you go, okay, direct mail. And on this account, I haven't done one yet. How much? Hey, Corey, mute okay. some people there yet for me yet, please. Um, so I got a couple of drafts here because uh, I've been working, I've been playing around with it, but I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna create one today. And it's a, it's a, it's a direct mail. And this one, Again, I mean, this is really what to the system learns what you're trying to do here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to advertise the listing and I'm going to say just listed 1705. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the default template. You create your own in the designs, like in Corey's class, he probably went over on the postcard side. You create your own postcard designs in designs. I'm going to use the, def the default ones. I, you know, I learned a long time ago that I'm not a graphic designer and I don't, I don't need to recreate the wheel. If there's templates in there for me, I'm gonna use them. It's just the easiest way to do is the best use of my time. You remember, value your time. How much time do you have every day to do stuff like this? All right, so listings. Let's go with this one again. So there's my thing, Richmond, Illinois, blah, blah, blah. Listing status. Listed bedrooms. Actually, it does have bedrooms. It has five of them, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six bathrooms because it's going to include the whole property. And then it has all the details here. Now, look at this right here. It tells me that it that it allows 575 characters. There's 1,026 characters in my description in the MLS. So let's see what we're going to do here. Da -da 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 -da. The good stuff in here. What do we take out? Um, let's go this way. Uh, there we go. That's good. Let's save that. My market center info. Now, if you have your marketing profile done, this will do it for you. Okay. Of course, I don't have my DBA logo. Why? It's the market center. Yep, their floor, state. Blah, blah, blah. 
I don't think I have my elite logos on, on this computer. I'm not on my computer. Oh, look at that. I have Northwest Indiana right here. We use their logo. Boom. There it is. I'm going to verify my address. It's going to tell me blah, blah, blah. Yep, that's the one I want. Whatever the whatever is suggested it is, that's probably the correct address because they go off of the post office. Okay, mm -hmm. so make sure you verify the address. Targeting. Local targeting, that's what I want. I don't want to target my database, that's fine. Target your database means that the printer will send it to the addresses in your command database. So unless you have an actual list of people with addresses in there that you want to mail the card, so like your Christmas card or stuff like that, um, then that's the only time you're going to do that. So we're going to go here, and now here's the price that you're going to have. Now this price includes the postage, the the mailing and all that stuff. So here we go. So this is I'm gonna do I'm gonna do local targeting and then my budget. So my budget's gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna say 50 50 properties, right? And then I'm gonna say first class so this this template here, and let's say I'm gonna splurge on this one. So I want a bigger postcard, it's a commercial property, and maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna do this one, actually, I like, this, I like this style better. And I'm gonna do first class. First class is a little bit more insurance that the post office will actually deliver it to the people there because they go through a different process or whatever it is, but I just know that I've gotten better success going first class. So do first class, unless you wanna trim the budget, obviously. I mean, R20 for, for first class for a big postcard printed and mailed already for you, it's not bad. Save that. QR code, you want to include a QR code? You can, I'm going to say yes. Let's do that. And then I'm going to select, download my app. So that QR code and that postcard that they can scan will send them to my app landing page that I have created, you know, through my design, through my consumer app. And then I could preview my postcard. I'm on, I'm on. Oh, I didn't select the pictures, duh. All right, let's see, which one should I choose? Hey, you Baldo? Yes. Are you mailing these out? I'm sorry? Are you mailing these out for real? No, I'm not gonna go through that. I'm not gonna actually mail these out, no. I was gonna say, if you put a black logo on there. Yeah, I know, <laughs> thank you. Um. So, oh, my picture's too small. Let's see. I think I have these pictures on here, actually. Yep, yeah. No, I have the wrong DBA logo on there. I can't mail these out. Boom, all right, so now that I did that, now I could probably preview my app, my postcard and it'll look better. So here we go, and actually I could probably cut it, so it's too large of a picture, but anyway, your picture will go here, then this will be the back. So the back shows, so the logo's obviously wrong, it's supposed to be sized correctly, I just uploaded one just to demonstrate, and it gives you the address offered at the price, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, a picture of the property and a little description, right? Your info, the copyright info for legality purposes, and your QR code. And in this space right here, they will print up the recipient's address and they'll be good to go, right? So we're gonna do that. And you could you could swap back and forth. So I can say like, oh, you know what, let me see what this one looks like. You know, if you like this one better, you know, with that one. The, back will, the back's a little bit different. I mean, you could play around with these, like which one, which one do you like better? Maybe I like this one better. You know, let's check it out. This is the back, looks a little bit different, right? Picture, just listed. So, you know, play around with these, like which one do you like better? You know, preview, oh, you know what? This one actually looks better. It actually does look better. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm like, okay, I'm good to go. And then you're gonna go to your targeting. Are you sure you want to create this? Yeah. Okay. You're targeting, this is the part that I like about millions in, com in command. It is super powerful. 
Because what it's going to do is that first and foremost, it's going to center the map to your location of your property, right? And then I'm gonna target 50 homes. But what I like about this is that it's gonna, it allows me to change my targeting here, right? So poster is gonna be first class. And I'm gonna say multifamily. Let's say you do that. And look, there's not that many, right? But it, it's targeting just those type of properties. Second, I can also select the square footage. And I can also select the type of built and uh, when was the last time it was sold? So maybe I want to target anybody that has sold in the last 10 years. So maybe in 2010, right? So anybody that's, that bought or, you know, that was last sold in 10 years ago, because according to NAR, every 10 years people move, I, I could target them. And you see how this changed now? So as you're moving filters, it told you. And then what was the last price sold? So if you're targeting a specific price, let's say that I want to say, well, Last time that it sold, maybe, yeah, right? And then now you're getting a different map. Now the whole time the map is readjusting itself centered to this location based on the 50 that I have here. Now I could be like, you know what? Maybe I want to do 75. And I change my number and it changes the map. There's no other mailing program out there that I know that does this, this well for the price that you're paying. I could send 75 postcards for 90 bucks from first class for that size postcard to specific targeted list addresses. And then of course, once, you, once you're they're good, you feel comfortable with what you got here, you go hit next and it goes to, it goes to the next, pro, next part. And that's where you put your payment info and all that good stuff. Questions on that? No questions, guys? You sure? All right. All right. So I'm going to leave this. I'm not going to actually pay for it because they didn't have the right logo and stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. We talked about social posts a little bit here. Social posts, um, those are the ones that you're just going to post to your pages. Now, the nice thing about command that now it allows me to post multiple pages is, is the best part because before it didn't allow me, um, it only allowed me to post to one page. So now I can post to multiple pages. And again, like before, it gives me a couple of samples and I can shuffle these, right? And I can shuffle these around and it'll give me different pictures every time I hit shuffle. Ubaldo, someone asked, um, or Susie asked, what is the turnaround time for the postcards? And I think I remember, I mean, I think as soon as you submit that they go into production right away and are printed. Uh, yeah, uh, from, time of, from time of hitting submit to delivery is about three to five business days. So it's pretty quick. And, and of course, the level of postage that you choose also um, matters. Matters. Um, quick question on the direct mail. Um, sure. you know, before we actually send out uh, for the whole targeted list, uh, is there any possibility that we can, uh, you know, send a test card to our address, you know, before sending it out to make sure? Oh, yeah. That, uh, oh, is it? Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. You can send one postcard out. There's no limit with, uh, with command. That's the nice thing. That's a good question. With command, you can send as little as one postcard up to hundreds. So somebody asked me the other day, well, I just want to say to like five specific addresses or five specific, um, just five postcards or 25 you could do that. And I actually highly recommend you do that. I would say send yourself each one of each of those postcards to see which one you like better. Because when you, when you actually see it physically, you'll determine better uh, which one uh, is the one you like. Okay. Now there's a cool video. I think this is the video for your app. I'll check right now. Let's see if it plays it. Yep. So the video, this video that's here, this video actually plays this video through and it's like a big commercial about the market, that, about the mobile app. It's already done for you. You don't have to do anything except share it. 
So if I go in here and I click this button right here, like I did before, I could share this video promoting my app. It's a big commercial, but my app with my info. So you see this right here, just all the information is already in there. And I could publish it to all my pages again. And let's see if it, I don't know if I can go to Twitter or not, but we'll find out. But the ad copy and everything is done for me. I don't have to write anything unless I really want to. I could go in there and put some emojis if I want to, like, you know, maybe put a, a, phone, a cell phone in there or a click button or the little fingers, or whatever you want to do, right? You could add a couple of emojis, it's totally up to you. Um, but I mean, for the most part, this is done for you already. The videos are, are produced for you. The content is written for you. I mean, what else? I mean, there, nobody else is going to do that for you. I mean, it's right here. So people that tell me like, well, I don't know what to post. Have you logged into command lately? Have you looked at the ones that we created for you already? Because it didn't go to, it didn't go to Twitter. That's fine. No. It doesn't have to go to Twitter. Um, so, you know, it just depends. Like, what do you want to do, right? Do you want, you know, there's stuff here. The neighborhoods one, I don't remember if we covered this or not. I think Corey covered the neighborhood um, video when you guys did designs. But this is a super easy video to create. You click the little arrow and it goes through, straight through. And it'll ask you, what neighborhood do you want to run it for? What are your neighborhood details? Now I'm gonna caution you on the market video depending on where you're at. Like here for us in Oak Lawn, it's one, it's one town, but this town is broken up into like 12 or 13 neighborhoods because you know everybody has a little nick, right? Like no, if, if past 95th Street, that's not, our, that's not that's separate because we're better than you guys. So depending on where you live, you have to be cautious. So what I do is I create Oak Lawn, but then I go into my MLS to InfoSparks and I'll actually pull the numbers for the town. So I'll say the average house is sold, the average time of market and stuff like that. Most MLSs have InfoSparks uh, included because it's part of showing time. So if you have InfoSparks, all that data is in there. You just put the town in there and it comes up. You know, so this content is written for you guys already. And it's just a couple of clicks away. So a social quick posts. Question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so with the social posts, like, can I um, also post on Instagram as well, or is it just Facebook? Um, you know, I haven't, I have you know what, no, Instagram, it's just Facebook and Twitter right now. Okay, okay, um, okay, mm -hmm. oh, great, thanks. Yeah, actually, I don't know of any app that actually post into Instagram right now. And the reason oh, for, okay. and the reason for that is that Instagram is supposed to be one of those pictures that you take, like, as you go, it's kind of what okay. it's supposed to be. It's almost like Snapchat. Okay, okay. I have one other question, um, not to interrupt you, but- That's okay, um, You know, with, <laughs> so uh, with the campaigns, like you know how you were saying that, yeah, if you can, um, like currently I don't have a listing on the market, mm -hmm. um, but if I, but I do have a friend who has a nice listing, um, but they're not with Keller Williams, they're with a different brokerage, but it's a nice property and I was just thinking that maybe, so how would it work? Like, is it gonna have the KW name or is it possible to do even if the listing belongs to a different brokerage? Like, do you You know need to that? have permission in writing in order to use another brokerage's listings. Oh, okay, so from the broker of the other brokerage, I need that. The broker and the agent. Okay. And cool, it has cool, to be cool. in writing, otherwise don't even attempt it. Okay, okay. I see. All right. Thank you. And for your Illinois folks, it's exactly the same here. And at here, actually, make sure that the managing broker is aware in Illinois. Make sure that the managing broker, Robin, knows that you're going to do something like that. And you do have to have it in writing because we don't want any issues or legality problems because we're advertising another broker's listing. Yes, please. I need right. to know. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. And actually, to tell you the truth, I would, there's so many unknowns with that that i actually try to steer steer away from that huh. um there okay. are so probably not the best idea not yeah. the best idea yeah it's not okay. i'm not saying I'm not saying you can't do it i would say there's there's things we could do to make sure it's legal um but you know um i try to stay away from that because there's so much gray area in that that there's so, there's so much opportunity for it for there's so much opportunity for issues I see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I think that's an opportunity for you to build your downline and then, um, and then you can use that listing. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to them about <laughs> our training. Maybe bring them, maybe invite them to the next command class about what kind, of advertising, know, right? we could, what kind of advertising we could do for them. <laughs> can you imagine if you could do this advertising? 
Maybe we could just take him to KW. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Build your downline. Uh, uh, okay. Any other questions about campaigns? I had a quick question. Yeah. So I was talking to Michelle today, and she told me that there was a way to automate people getting texts and emails when they come into command from a Facebook ad. That way, like if they were to click on something at 2 o'clock in the morning, they would automatically be contacted. Um, and I was wondering what that was about or what that was called or how I could figure it out. So those are triggers and they're not active yet. Okay, perfect. Yeah, they're, they're coming soon. They're not active yet. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? All right, what do you guys, give me some feedback. What do you guys do when you get a new lead? What is your process right now? You get a new lead today at two in the morning. What do you guys do? Oh, that's probably why you guys are not making any money. <laughs> you guys don't do anything. I haven't gotten any leads on I mean, me. I think it wasn't working for me. Okay. <laughs> That's why I'm on this like class right now with you. All right, I'm awesome. I'm hoping, it, hoping it'll work this time. It will. You're hoping it will, right? You intend it for will, it to work. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, hey, if I do get a, if I'm up at two in the morning and somebody messages me about something, I respond. <laughs> what about you, Atara? Well, I don't respond at 2 a.m., but, <laughs> but, but at 8 a.m., when I wake up, when I wake up at 8 a.m., I'll um, send a message, let them know that I got their, you know, communication, and then either, whether it's a buyer or seller, you know, I think I, I would probably put it either in the MLS to set up a search or, or go into command and put it in there to set up a profile. So that's the first things I would do, you know to make sure I put that contact so I don't lose it. Very good. Somewhere. Okay, you guys want me to tell you how to do it easier in command? Yep. I'm gonna tell you how to Absolutely. do it in command. So let's say you get leads, right? You wake up in the morning and your phone is blowing up because Kelly is blowing up because it's telling you, hey, you got, you got 60 leads overnight, right? And I come in here and I click on my 53 leads and it takes me right to those 53 leads because this is this campaign that I'm running right now. And it's gonna show me just the leads of this campaign. You guys catch that? Mm-hmm. So these are gonna be our leads. It's gonna load up. There's a couple of things that I will recommend you guys do. You guys could do it or not do it. It's totally up to you. And by the end of the year, we'll compare paychecks, okay? So let's say right here. So this and this guy right here, Donna Smith, who last visited on April 8th. So that means that she's been to my site on April 8th to click on the linking. You know, she viewed the market report. She hasn't called me back, but guess what? She's checking the market snapshot. So what does that tell me? She's still paying attention to what I'm sending her. So I'm sending it to her still. So these are things that I'll do. When I get a lead, I go in here and I call them. If I have if I have time, you know, right now because I gotta go through all my leads, so there's no triggers. I'll call them. If they don't answer, unlike most people, I don't need voicemails because I feel that people don't want to hear me anyway. So what I'll do is through command because I have Twilio, I'll click their phone number and I'll send them a text. And when I click this text button, I have Twilio set up, the box up. And I write my message here and I send my text. After my text, I do a couple more things. I go down here and I add them to a neighborhood. Now they are not, I don't have their home address. Facebook only gives me their cell phone, their name and their email. But their neighborhood, I set it up based on the location of the property. So if I go to notes, it tells me what ad they clicked on when I got them. So they clicked on my 8535 Melvina open house ad. I know this property is located in Burbank, so I added Burbank to them. So the smart plan, buy weekly nurture. Now my new leads, now this lead I got, this is probably an old lead, right? Yeah. Um, so that was my, so yeah, because this house is on the contract already. Uh, yep, here it is, March 24th. So my wife, now, the other plans that I would add is I would add them to promote my app. 
and I will add them to the quarterly column. Right, so I will do that. The second thing I do that most people don't know about is this feature right here. It's called the safe search. It's a one search. You cannot create multiple searches because the whole point of this is to get them to engage on your website and to create an account. So what I do is I go in here and I create a search. I create a search called Burbank. And if I go and hit the edit it, it'll tell me what it is. And what it does is I took, so I named it Burbank. This is their email because it's part of the contact information. The neighborhood is Burbank. And then I put a price range right between the property and the price of the property that I'm selling. And then I put the stuff, some of the features that the property uh, features like a huge backyard and pool. And then I go and select some of these things here. And it sends them a search. And I think it does it like every other week or every three weeks or something like that. And I'm, I don't care if they delete the email right now. If they get the searches and they delete it, okay, who cares, right? But the notes are, the notes right here, date, date, date. All right, guys. Um, so the neighborhood is Burbank, and I created a search. So these are the things that I will do to keep in touch with my contacts, right? A smart plan, so I'll call them and text them, and they don't answer either one of those. I'll add them to smart plans because now they're being dripped. And if they're viewing, if they're, if you're viewing, um, if they're viewing my, my, my market snapshots, then I know they're engaging, right? That's what I want. So if they're viewing it and they're not unsubscribing, as so you see, she viewed it. She viewed it this day. Actually, she viewed it three times. You see that? And then she did a search in Burbank. So even though she's not responding to my text and my email, she's still engaged in the neighborhood. So what does that tell me? This is a potential buyer for me. And she's gonna buy soon. Uh, Ubaldo, can I ask you a question? Um, yeah. As far as, okay, when you're adding, so when you add, let's say multiple neighborhoods, because in Southern California, mm -hmm. these are really small. <laughs> these are really small areas here. Yeah. Um, so if you do multiple, now when they get that, so that automatically generates the bi-weekly smart plan, right? Basically when you do that? Yeah, it does. Well, and no, then, it doesn't automatically generate it. It generates a landing page automatically. Uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So it generates a landing page, and the landing page looks like this. So actually, do I have one? Let me see. Let me go to my brother because he's my guinea pig. I I, I add him to everything. I swear, one day he's gonna he's gonna go ahead and um, block me from all his stuff. All my content. <laughs> And then when you make that call, because it does seem like there's a decent rate of people that are having fake numbers, which is fine. But I mean, so basically, do you just delete that number at least? So it's not, <laughs> you know, in, in the system if you find that it's a fake one? Yeah, if I find it's a fake one, yeah. Um, actually with Facebook though, because people click through so fast, very few people actually change their number and email. You'll get, you do get your handful, right? I get like, I probably got like five of them. Um, total the whole time that I've been running ads to command for Facebook lead, uh, lead form because most people are so trigger happy. They'll click, click, and they click, click next, and then they don't, they don't, um, they don't, uh, they don't actually go and, um, and like change their information. People aren't, they're just like, whatever, just click next. They don't, e they don't even realize they're giving you the information. I feel like people don't read that stuff. Got it. Okay. And so you, so you call text, then you put them on, on you, then you put them on smart plan, but in the meantime, you're also doing a neighborhood, that neighborhoods, that smart neighborhood snap, snap out shot thing. And then you said that when you add the neighborhoods, that creates a landing page. Now, if you add multiple neighborhoods, is that multiple landing pages or is that one landing page with all of them? One landing page. Oh, nice. Okay. That's, that's good. Yeah. So like my brother lives in the PTSC area of Ohio. It's like a small neighborhood near Pickerton. But if I, if these are, then it, a man would tell me like, these are areas around Pickerton, around around this neighborhood. And I could actually add them right from here. If I wanted okay. to. So if I add Stonebridge on here, 
But now I have Stonebridge on here. I will have Pine Ridge Estates, let's say. And I'm only doing this in this contact right now on the go because, um, you know, it's my brother and I don't care if he, if he gets mad or not. <laughs> but now if I go to this, so this is my, my link right here. This is his link. Every link here is unique to that client. So if I click on this link, and actually, I'm going to go here, preview. So I'm not going to email it out. It's going to take me to his landing page. This is the landing page that he gets. So when they get that email about your market stack for the week, and it says here, view their stats, I'll bring them here. Okay. And he's going to see, he's going to see all his neighborhoods. You see that? Pine Ridge. I see. Okay. PTS, PTSC. And he could choose whichever one he wants. He can ask, also choose not to get this one anymore. And then he could also choose to add more neighborhoods. Now, this okay. is the thing though. It's not gonna, this is a, right now it's not gonna allow me to click on here and show you how it works because you know, I'm previewing it. I wonder if I put it actually. It's, I did copy the link. And then so, so basically, so this is the landing page. And then, so that doesn't automatically trigger the bi-weekly. You're, you have to go in and trigger the, you have to add this bi-weekly neighborhood smart, the, the, the bi-weekly neighborhood plan, uh, smart plan. Correct. Yeah, you see now, now that I'm on his actual page, because I went to the actual link that he would get, it allows me to add more neighborhoods if I want to. This is my favorite part about this page, because when they do that, I, and I, and before, I, every time I do a quarterly call, I go in here to see what their activities are like. And if I see they added a neighborhood within that within those within that quarter, I'll call them and say, "Hey, uh, you know, I saw you added Stonebridge to your to your neighborhood snap. You know, it gives me a conversation piece. You know, is there what interest what's, what's your what interests you about that? And sometimes they'll be like, um, they have better schools, and my kids getting you know my kids about two years from starting school, and they have better school district. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, anything anything specific you want you would like about that you would want to know about that area? Can I send you something? It's a conversation piece, right? So that's the nice thing about them being able to add their own neighborhoods. I like that feature. And it allows them to see their neighborhood stats um, about it. You know, so if they go in here, they can see the specific stats for PTSC. And, and then um, when you add that smart, uh, the, the bi-weekly uh, neighborhood smart plan, um, that automatically populates that URL that you, that, does that automatically populate or do you have to physically? Yeah. No, the smart plan automatically populates that link. You don't have to worry about it. Got it. And so you just kind of leave that one. You just pull that in, leave it alone, and it's just running basically perpetually. Yep. Got it. And then how many smart, I mean, is there, is it like when you're having multiple smart plans running, is that a bit of like, it, does that get confusing as far as far as the system like running like several, like, I don't know how many you, you run. Like, I know you said quarterly calls is one, this biweekly. I, I obviously the Facebook like initial touch, right? Like that, so that's three already. Are you, and also the apps, that's four. Like are you, how many um, smart plans are you adding it simultaneously? Uh, simultaneously, I would add the biweekly smart plan, the quarterly call and the download and the promote my app one. Mm -hmm. And it's not overkill because like the biweekly only goes out, they use subscribe them every other week, right? Yeah. The promote my app goes out usually the same day and then it's like, it's only like a three day plan. It sends them a text, an email, and then a text. Um, and then that's over. And the quarterly call, it doesn't send them anything. That's a reminder for you. It'll pop up as a task like, hey, you need to call XYZ today. Because uh, you know how Nick Baldwin, like, you know, on the, on the commander conversion, he has like that 22 step, or I mean, it's like a pretty elaborate Facebook, you know, response. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, would that be like, yeah, as that's going along with these, <laughs> I guess how they all play to like play together basically. Yes, yeah, so you see, that's a different. So that's a different situation. So like if you're doing a big uh, multi-step one, which you know I actually started importing it into my command, just tweaking it a little bit. You have to tweak it to make sure it fits your demographics. Um, I would run that, and then when that ends, I would add the, the next one. You, would you do the bi-weekly neighborhood thing though? I mean, that's actually, that's, that is a Nick Baldwin's one. I'm sorry. I think that is, that is actually mm -hmm. in there, is it not? I think. I think he incorporates that in there somehow. Yeah, I don't know how, it, I don't think it automatic. I think you kind of have to physically do the. Um... Yeah, you have to add that smart plan in there too. Got it. Okay. What I do well, is, maybe... what I do, what I would do is I would look at the, the late time. Like how many, how many days in between are we talking about? Got it. Because if you're, if you're, 
if it, if it's like if it's gonna if it's gonna bombard them, people will get frustrated or be like you're spamming them and then they'll unsubscribe, right? So sure. just look at look at the spacing of when it hits. So kind of just look at that. And I think Nick Nick's um, Nick's pretty good about creating those smart plans where they could where you could run those alongside other ones. So they it should be okay. But I wouldn't I wouldn't do I wouldn't do like your own texting one. I wouldn't do all that stuff because then it, it'll be overkill, right? So I would add um, the Facebook lead one that he created and the bi-weekly one and then the quarterly one because the quarterly one is a reminder for me to follow up with them. Okay. Because and, even okay. Though that, so you do those three and then kind of leave it. Leave yeah. It yeah. And I would do the search still too because the search is just a, a one-off. It's like, look, these are these are other properties around this around this house that you might be interested in. Hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so the search, the search, I would always do no matter what I'm doing because the search is a one-off search, and it's, I'm I'm showing them, I'm being proactive of showing them what else is around that house besides that one that they might be interested in. And then on a side note, um, for mass email, do you have to re do you have to incorporate Mailchimp or does it does the system no. do it natively? For the mass for the mass email, it does it natively. It uses the command email portion, so it doesn't need Mailchimp. Do you know, um, I mean, I guess that's not for today. I mean, I, I'd love to find out how to actually do that because that, that seemed a bit confusing. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll go over with you later on. Perfect. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Anything else? What do we got? Give me some ahas. What did hey, you guys hey, learn today? About the one, one quickie on the, on the bi weekly, I, I saw on a few of them where it said it automatically terminated. What 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 did I do? Or I mean, I I just re I reestablished the biweekly, but I, I was just curious as to why it would have just automatically terminated. It would automatically terminate if you add the opportunity if you add the smart plan before the neighborhood. Okay. Make sure the neighborhood's in there before you add the smart plan. Well, well, it, it, I, I've done that work. That red box comes up and says you can't add this plan because you don't have a neighborhood. But, but I, I'm one that, that I've already gone through and added the plan and it was running for, you know, a month, maybe two, and then all of a sudden, boom, I got something that was terminated and I didn't know why. I, I, th I thought it had a finite duration, but from what you just said, it, it, it goes perpetually. So I was just yep. curious. Yeah, next time something like that happens, let me know, but it, it should just run continuously. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Give me some ahas, guys. What do you guys learn today? What you guys, what don't, what you guys learn? What didn't you learn? You know, well, you I just ran an ad, so we'll see what happens. Thanks. <laughs> you know, I'll let you know. Stay so, tuned. Ronald, yes. Is, is this um training recorded? Can come yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Yeah, Corey or I will post it um in the in the next day or two. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. No one thing that I the the entire class was great on your part but one thing i really liked is how you could send the postcards around a targeted piece of property in that neighborhood that is really cool i didn't i didn't know we had capability like that yeah uh, we're actually we're the only ones that could do that at, at that cost level if you to do that to do that that kind of mailing you would have to pay a little bit more money to a specific mailing company like um every um everyday marketing or something like that okay that is that's a real Cool feature. Oh, I'm glad you guys like that. What else, guys? Come on. You know, I, Jamal, no, my, my phone died while I was at the very end, but I'm back on. I just, it, this is just letting me know that I need to get in my command and practice it or play with it. Just like I have to do scripts every day for half an hour, I need mm -hmm. to do command every day for a half an hour and just get on doing my command and be done with it. You know? Yeah. It, it it really commands your business. This is a tool that commands your business. Yeah, Corey and I are talking about next month's training. One of the things we're gonna do is that there's a cool KW University training they're doing right now. It's uh, it's command your business based on the MRA model, which is what we put mm -hmm. down. And we're gonna go over, uh, we're trying to figure out the schedule right now, but we're gonna go over how how MREA and command work together. And there's a reason why mm. they call, well, the platform's called command. There's a reason mm. why we call it command, right? Because if it's your command central, if it's your central place to Google start your business, mm -hmm. you should be, you should, this should be open every day when you start lead generating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? I get, I get it. I get it mm -hmm. now. 
Absolutely. And Kelly actually is the uh, the partner to command because when you're not looking in command, Kelly is your mobile app that's helping you, you know, navigate through command while you're with Kelly. Absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So much good stuff, Ubaldo. Even for newer agents who don't have listings, I like that you um, explained and showed us where the, um, like, the pre-formatted content is that we can use to... Um, advertise like our, our, our app and things like that. So that was pretty powerful. Awesome. I'm glad you found that useful. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we really don't have to look any place else for our business. We have it all for our business. And it's all included for the great price that you already paid for. And then nice. And then nice. Mm -hmm. 32 bucks. Yep. Well guys, we actually did a one and a half hour class today, believe it or not. I'm surprised that we went that long, but I'm glad you guys found it useful. Um, once we post a recording, you know, you guys could view it again. And if you have any question, reach out to, to somebody, to one of us, and we'll be oh, gosh, yes. you. But guys, right now is the best time to be running any kind of ad or any kind of promotion and generating leads and talking to people. Nobody else is doing it. Uh, you know, I'm in the business every day, and I see that people are not calling we have market centers here telling their agents not to show property right now. Mm -hmm. So get on it. If you're a new agent, this is the best time to be in the business because you're learning from the ground up. And if you can make it in this market, when this market shifts again to the other side, you're going to be killing it. So don't let the fact that you're new, you know, prevent you from getting on it and starting running some ads or some posts or some campaign of some sort. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Baldo. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank, Thank you, guys. So much, Thank you Baldo. Baldo. Appreciate you. Take care. Thank Have you. a good day. Thank you very much. Bye. You're very welcome, you, guys. Baldo. Have a great day. Go make some money. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank Thanks for your help. Thanks.